Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Panasaurus's The Wolves. This is a two to five player board game that takes roughly 90 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, The Wolves, you're playing as a pack of wolves. There are multiple different packs that you can choose from, all while vying for control, domination, and uh, area placement on this game board here. You can play as one of the many different types of wolves, but they all function basically the same. You Utilizing your alpha wolf and your baby wolves to kind of go to each of the different areas on the game board and control that area when needed to on the moonlight board. Once it is time to score, everybody's checking the areas that they're going to be trying to score, and then the wolves will move on to a new territory. You'll do this three times, and you can play this in different ways based on the moonlight board for the different number of players, and you'll score those three times. And whoever has the most points at the end of the third scoring round is the winner. Are you ready to check out this tile? flipping action area control management type of a game yeah it's got a lot going on for it I'll explain the setup explain how to play and then of course my review to set up the game the wolves the first thing you'll do is decide how many players are playing this game and I've set this game up for three players however adding a fourth character in on the side there uh, the way you're going to do this is you'll take the tiles from the game box and set it up for the number of players required and each of the different playing counts is a going to be a different amount of tiles utilized this here is the three player variant where you'll have one tile in the middle three on the bottom and three on the top then you're going to go ahead and set the points to the side and the other tokens like the lone wolves, the animals, the terrain tiles, and the extra actions on this side, the moonlight board here, and the player boards outside. When you start with the main game board, the first thing you're going to do is place the moon tokens randomly on the watering hole spaces. You'll be placing for a three player game, two of each of the different types of scoring icons. Then take the lone wolf tokens and place them on the spaces with a lone wolf icon. The next thing you'll do is you'll take a set of every animal plus an extra set of rabbits and place them down two in each area on the board where the meat symbols are. So you'll have the different beavers and boars, rabbits, uh, moose, and uh, antelope or deer, as well as an extra set of rabbits. And then after that, your game board has been completed. The last thing you'll do is you'll take your game board and hopefully your baggie has all the pieces that you need for your color as well as these six different tile variations you'll need as well. To make sure that you have your right tiles, check to make sure that each tile that you have in the bottom right hand corner has your letter. So this is E, I have all the E tiles, and you'll place them down from left to right on top of your game board in the little slots provided. On the left hand far side of your game board there's going to be a symbol on your wolf that is going to correlate to your action tile that actually has the same type of terrain on both sides. Place that there, the rest can go anywhere on any side, kind of mix and match it up. And then you'll take two sets of wolves, a lone wolf and a baby wolf, and you'll place them down on your tundra wolf or rocky wolf area of the game board. Just set them aside in two sets. You have your pack spread, wolf speed, and howl range, and you'll place your little uh, dens on the locations uh, adjacent to the top left-hand side of each of the spreads. So you'll check to see that there's at least one number in the upper left-hand corner for each of these areas. The rest of the areas are covered by these wonderful little dens. Layers are in the bottom left-hand side of your game board. You're going to place four of them down along right on top of the spaces provided. And finally, your extra wolves, because you're going to get more wolves throughout the game. Go ahead and place your baby wolves and your lone wolves on the spaces provided, and it will tell you which one has the, uh, the lone wolves. The rest are just going to be babies. After you've done that for all players, give every single player an action card and set the rule book aside somewhere. And of course, make sure that your moonlight board is going to have the player crown. So this is the two to three player side, and the other side is the four to five player side. Once you've placed that there, you're ready to play the game, The Wolves. Okay, let's discuss how the game plays. Starting play will begin with placement. Obviously, we have no wolves on the game board, so the player that's going to start will be the Tundra Wolf. And you're going to take your sets of wolves, your baby wolf and your lone wolf, and you will check the middle tile of the main game board. Place your wolf set in either side across the river. You'll not place on the river. So if I want, I can place my wolves on the bottom section of the river area in any of these spaces. I place them both in the same space. Then we're going to go snake wise clockwise around the game board. And the next player will take theirs in place. The next player will take theirs in place. 
and then it's going to go back around. So we're ignoring the screen player like they don't exist because this is set up for three players. So that means that the yellow player is going to take an extra action. It'll go uh, white, purple, yellow, yellow, purple, um, blue or white, however you want to look at it. <laughs> And now when you place your second set of wolves, it has to be opposite side of where your previous wolves were located. So if you have the uh, lower portion of the river and you selected to place a wolf pack there, then you'll have to choose the upper portion and, and place it on that side. And then once again, the next player will take their wolves. Once again, they placed here, up uh, this, uh, this area here. So you'll go ahead and place these guys down here. And then these guys will go over here, separating each of your two packs in different areas of the spread. Uh, then the game is going to begin with the player who first put wolves down. On your turn, you'll take two actions, and there's only three actual actions in the game. You can move, you can create dens and layers or howl, all of which do the same thing and have the same requirement, and you can dominate. Uh, there's also a bonus thing that you can do, which is a free action when you surround a piece of food or like a critter with three wolves adjacent to them in adjacent spaces. You'll just take this little piece and place it down on your game board. And I'll explain more about that later. So let's go ahead and go through the actions of the game. First one is move. Well, when you take actions in this game, you are actually going to have to flip your tiles. At the top portion of your game board, you'll see all these tiles here with different terrain elements. If you want to move, you'll select one of them, and then you'll select your wolf pack, and then you will flip. So if I wanted to, I could say, I'm going to actually flip over this um, I'm like plains type area. And when I flip that, I'm going to remember plains. Okay, now I'm gonna to check to see my pack spread and my wolf speed. My spread is two and my speed is three. I can move two sets of wolves or two wolves up to three spaces, but I have to make sure that I move them to the plains areas. So I could go, I'm gonna take this guy here and move him one, two, and three. And my next wolf, I can choose this one or one from over here, and I can go one, two. So I can actually move less than three if I'd like. So it's up to two wolves, up to three spaces each. And they have to go on spaces of the tile that I flipped. So if I selected, for instance, I selected uh, like a tundra area, I could, I'd go to the tundra or the plains. If I selected the rocky mountains, I'd go there or the forest. Any of those tiles that I flip is where I move my wolves. Okay, the next action is to howl or I can go ahead and create a den or a lair. Now to howl, I will actually have to have two of the different train types uh, of the same variety. I also will have to have a howl range, and that, that thing that I want to howl at must be in the range of whatever wolf I'm utilizing. So let's say, for instance, I am this purple player here, and I've got these wolves here. And let's say that I have these tiles like this, have two of these like tundra, like snow areas flipped over and ready to go. And I wanted to convert this wolf here, this lone wolf. I can do that as long as I check my range, one, two, and I am two spaces away with my lone wolf, my, or my, my, my pack leader, has to be a pack leader to howl. I, I can check my range with my howl and then I'll flip over the two costs, which are the two specific tundras, that's it, which is where the lone wolf is located on, and I'll flip them over. Then, for how, I can actually go ahead and remove this token, place it on the game board, the moonlight board, and then I will get one of my wolves, and I will take it from my game board and place it down onto the area in which the lone wolf was located. That's the same thing as well for dens and layers. I can go ahead and uh, utilize two of these, uh, these tiles here, flip them, and then I can place a den or I could place a layer, layers are a little more required, on a space within howl range. So for instance, if I have these two rocky areas here, I could flip them, I'll check my howl range, I'll then go ahead and go ahead and place a den somewhere. And I'll go ahead and take one of my dens on either pack spread, wolf speed, or howl range, and place it on a space adjacent to my wolf here, my main pack leader. And that's going to open up more speed, which will let my wolves move faster, the spread, which will let me use more wolves to move more spaces, and howl range so that I can go ahead and howl farther across. Uh, and the, 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 that's how a 
den is made. But what about a lair? Well, a lair is the same thing, but there's a few requirements. The first requirement is you have to already have a den adjacent to a watering hole on the game board. You also have to make sure that your wolf is within range in order to turn this den into a lair. This den is going to go to the moonlight board and you're going to be able to take a lair and place it adjacent to the watering hole. The difference between dens and layers is that layers are going to be worth more points at the end of the game. You're also going to gain a terrain token, and so they're going to be useful as you place them down the game board. Oh, additionally, too, when you're scoring, which I'll explain how scoring works in a bit here, but you're going to score with these, these layers here at a value of three, whereas other wolves and dens are only worth one. So it's relatively useful to place the layers out on the locations you want to score score uh, before they're scored. And that's how you make uh, the ability to, to convert lone wolves into your wolves, placing down dens, and then layers, which is converting a den into the layer as long as it's adjacent to a watering hole, which is also on the same space as these score markers. Okay, the last thing you can do is dominate. Now dominate is the most expensive action and it's going to require you to have three tiles of the same type. And if you don't have three tiles of the same type, you simply can't dominate. And sometimes you're going to need to gain these tokens here in order to do it. But you have one type of train for each board that will let you do it, uh, for each board that will let you do it. So in this case here, the Rocky Wolves uh, have three of these uh, mountainous looking tiles. And if you want, and somebody's on a mountainous tile. So for instance, if my wolf is somewhere present on the game board and somebody else's small wolf is present on a game board, not with their big alpha wolf, you can howl at them and dominate them, which is basically flipping three tiles of the same type, taking that wolf, putting it on the moonlight board and taking one of your wolves out and placing it down in its stead. So you're basically converting them into your tribe. Now, of course, the same rules apply for everything. Whenever you use tiles to flip, you have to have either one, two, or three, depending on your action, and you must either move to that tile that you flipped, or you must activate or convert or create on the location of the tiles that you're flipping. So you can't flip wood tiles and convert somebody in a marsh or, or in a plains or a tundra. So you have to make sure you make sure to do that. But that's, those are all the main actions in the game. You will be moving, howling, creating dens, creating layers, and then dominating other wolves. You may never dominate an alpha. You may never dominate a small wolf that is next to an alpha, that is, on, that is with an alpha, because they are basically protected. Um, and whenever you take a piece off of this game board, no matter if it's yours or somebody else's, always put it on the moonlight board, uh, going from left to right, top to bottom. And then the final thing is when you have three of your wolves adjacent to a prey, you'll take that prey and place it on your hunting prey location. That is going to score you points at the end of the game, just like everything else will. And you're also going to gain one of these little howl tokens. These are bonus tokens that will let you have an extra turn um, by just simply playing it. Normally on your turn, you'll get to take two actions. So for instance, you could move and then you could choose to move again. You could move and then you could howl. You could move and then dominate. Any two actions that you'd like in combination. And with this howl token, and you can have as many as you'd like, you can spend them to take an additional action on your turn. But otherwise, that's basically how the game is played. I take my two actions, Callie takes hers, Max takes his, and Josh takes his, and we keep going around the game board, removing things, adding things to the game board, gathering prey, placing out dens, uh, turning dens into layers, uh, moving the, the, the dens off of our spread wolf speed and range to give us more power, and our wolves from the game board converting these lone wolves and placing ours onto the field, dominating other players and putting them on this moonlight board until when the board says to you, you'll check the number of players in the game, you'll check the specific moon type. So once I have, out of three-player game, uh, nine pieces on this game board, we're gonna activate scoring for this uh, crescent moon. We'll check each of the different areas in the game board and we'll see who has dominated the area. The player with the most power is the winner and will score the most points, and the next player will score the second most points. And there's rules for ties as far as that goes as well. You'll share points. Each wolf you have is worth one point, each den you have is worth one point, and your layers are worth three. 
Whoever has the most points will actually take the moon tile itself and you'll score the backside, which is gonna be either four, six, or eight points. The other player, the second place player, will simply take resources or, or point tokens from the pile here based on second place. And there's always gonna be two areas on the game board in a three player game that you can score. As you can see here, there's two in the bottom section and the top section. Then when it goes from, from the three player game, the nine all the way to the 17 marker, that is when half moon locations are going to score. And you'll do the same thing. You'll check each area, you'll check how many wolves, dens, and layers are in that area, and you'll reward people points up until the last spot, which is 22, which is the end of the game. You will check to see the last two spaces on the game board and who has the most points there, the most locations there, and score them points. In which case the game will end instantly. Now you're going to go ahead, well, you'll, you'll finish your turn. So if you're the one that activated it, you'll finish your turn and then the game is over. And you will check points. The first thing you'll check is the points for all the different various locations that you scored throughout the game. The next thing that you'll check is your pack spread, wolf speed, and howl range. Because if you can remove enough dens, you can score either three or seven points because it always goes continuously. You never get both scoring in each individual section, you'll just get the highest value. Layers, you'll simply check to see how many layers you placed out. If you placed out two layers, you'll get 10 points. If you placed out four layers, you will get 20. Each type of prey that you get, because you have to have different types of prey, you can't get the same one more than once, will score you from 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. And don't forget, they also give you that bonus turn. And then finally, you have your pack wolves. As you put wolves on the board, you'll score more points, and you can get a total of 12 points just by doing that. And that's basically the idea of the game. Whoever has the most points at the end, dominated the most areas on the field, controlled the most locations with dens and layers, and placed their wolves out, is the winner of the game, the wolves. Yeah, it's pretty simple like that. So the wolves is basically a tile flipping, action game with area control. You're simply going to be starting with two packs of wolves moving across the deserted wasteland, the tundra, the forest, the mountains, attempting to a, convert lone wolves to your cause and gain new wolves, dominate your opponent's wolves and convert them to your cause, create dens and placing down markers, hopefully near watering holes, to then convert them into layers, thusly giving you more points and more value when you're trying to do area control. You'll be moving around the game board throughout the whole time. You're gonna be starting off in the small crescent moon areas and you'll be vying for dominance there. And then after that scores, or maybe if you don't think you can do it, maybe you'll leave a little earlier and go to the half moon spaces and then finally the full moon spaces to where hopefully the whole board is filled with dens and wolves and other people's lairs, all the prey has been eaten, and all the lone wolves converted to the right cause. And uh, all the while, you're also gaining these these tokens. You're going to get these uh, howl tokens for bonus actions, which is super useful, and these terrain tokens, which can be useful if you use them correctly, especially when it comes to dominating. You can also, I forgot to mention, dominate certain players' dens as well. I believe you can dominate layers as well. You have to still meet the requirements. You have to be within range. You have to flip over those three tiles and you'll be taking them off putting them on the moonlight board and placing yours on as well However, when players dominate your stuff You might lose them from the game board as far as scoring goes or moving wolves go But at the end of the game you're still scoring for all the pieces that are off of your game board So let's say you placed all four of your layers out on the game board at the end of the game You're scoring 20 points and you're getting all four of those terrain pieces that you can utilize for domination or other things throughout the game However, you might lose them by getting them dominated and thusly you won't score points, maybe at the right time, for the crescent, half, and full moon locations as you're going through the moonlight board. And so that can cause issues, but you're not gonna suffer for it later in the game. Just placing is all that matters. Um, there is a general consensus that everyone wants to gain control of the different areas at different times. Gaining those value is very important, but the game board is just as important. Being able to convert wolves to score you points, placing out dens to score you points, and especially layers, because you can get up to 20 points by doing that, is super useful. The bonus ability of hunting prey, if you can spend one turn collecting a prey, gaining a bonus token, and taking another action, it's going to be worth it, because it's as though you never lost an action to begin with, and now you went from one to four points, or four to nine, or nine to 16. So if you can go on the board and gather these different pieces of prey, chef's kiss, it's definitely worth considering. 
I love the different actions in the game, but I also like their simplicity. Being able to move wolves to the different locations, having the ability to gain the valuable actions uh, increasing throughout the game, or I can choose, do I want to have more wolves move slower, less moves move, wolves move faster, um, or do I want them to howl farther, thusly allowing me to gain control of new wolves to push them along. So I can howl at a wolf over there, and on my next action, my wolf is now over there, and so they can now move to a new location. So you're gaining kind of a double benefit. And so utilizing this board here and deciding how you want to take control of your dens and place them is super important. And den placement's useful as far as watering holes go. Yes, layers kind of just sit there. They don't have a huge value, except when it comes to scoring, um, but they give you a ton of points. They're probably the most important things when, when it comes to points because they're so easy to place, um, provided that you're not in a super contested area. This is a area control game. It feels tight like an area control game you're probably not going to win every single area. In fact, I know you won't. It's very, very difficult to do so. And you're always kind of gunning for the next thing that you want to do. The fact that you have so much variety in the choices that you make, but the actions are so minimalistic, I really, really like. I can choose to do one of three different basic type of actions. I mean, Howl, Den, and Lair are all kind of different, but they all are the two flip. And so you kind of remember them all the same. Howling is really, really good, converting things. Um, and yeah, I, I just really, really Really enjoyed the full complexity of the game while still keeping it very simple. I was able to teach this game in five minutes. I was able to explain the actions and the most complex part of the game is just remembering that when you flip over these tiles here, it has to be where you go or what you convert. You have to make sure you can't just flip over two tiles of the same type and do whatever the heck you want. It has to be based on those tiles and forgetting that can cause you some trouble later in the game. The game board is beautiful. The wolf pieces, all the different wooden pieces are really, really spectacular. Um, I love the art for the game. It feels good. You know where the spaces are. You know what your tiles represent on the game board. Uh, you know what all the pieces are doing. You understand what you need to be doing most of the time. There's not a lot of confusion in the game. Um, there is a little bit of analysis paralysis as to what you choose as far as your actions go. But I think as you play this a few rounds, you'll start to feel it out and know what you want to do on your next turn. Because while this is a competitive game with area control, it's not going to be that your opponents can completely hinder you to do what you want to do on your next action. The main unique nuance thing about this game is the tile flipping, which is actually really freaking cool. Being able to plan ahead so that on your next turn you can do what you want, and maybe this turn you'll set up to do what you want for next turn. Or take your first action so that you can actually do what you really want to do, which is your second action. And then of course getting these extra bonus tile tokens are so useful, that can allow you to do some insane stuff as well. And then with your tiles, uh, and, and of course your train pieces or tokens, now you can start dominating even more in the game. So placing out layers can be fruitful and useful as well. Um, as far as things I didn't like about this game, um, I feel like there's quite a bit of setup um, and you have to go ahead and check the different types of setup for each of the number of players in the game. Um, as far as how the tokens are going to be placed and where you're placing the different tile varieties. Um, and, you know, just setting up a whole player board t does take a bit. So I would strongly recommend when you play this game that make sure everybody puts in and does their part and makes their own game board. It's really quite simple and everything is shown to you where everything needs to go. But it does take quite a while for just one person or two people to set this game up, even though it's a relatively small and straightforward game. Another thing that can happen is you can kind of get bullied on in this game, whether intentionally or unintentionally. It might be that you just happen to place in two areas uh, as a, in a three-player game where each of the other two players want to get rid of your pieces to dominate you in those areas, and thusly you lose control in the game. And you can basically not gain the control points. But, but luckily, you still score the points for the things that you do in the game. You just lose out on certain aspects when you get dominated or when somebody takes over an area you are vying for. But yeah, in an odd number of players, there can be that odd person out and it can happen. So I always recommend with these type of games, four players. Always play with at least two and two, uh, or if you had six, five might not even be so bad because you've got enough people kind of vying for everybody else. With that three player, it can potentially happen. Um, the great stuff. Like I said, the great stuff is the tile flipping. It's unique. It feels good. It feels complex, but it feels simple as to what I want to do. I just have to think about my actions. Like I need to flip these two in order to get these two tiles and so on and so forth. 
the fact that each of these different air areas on the game board represent the dens they need to place out and what I get for them is actually a benefit later in game. Um, each of the tokens are actually really wonderful and placing down the wolves, moving the wolves, everything feels very tactile and wonderful. All the components are excellent, all the art is excellent. Overall, it's a really fun game. If you want a game that feels kind of like a tableau management game, but it also has like the heart of an area control game, all filled with a beautiful theme of wolves and domination, territory control, and moving around, basically migrating from area to area. This does the perfect job of that. A wonderful game by Pandasaurus, one of my favorites in quite some time. I really, really recommend The Wolves. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, The Wolves by Pandasaurus. If you'd like, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog post giveaways, kickstart list, and more. A new giveaway is up on the site for Labyrinth Adventures. You can go ahead and pick that up, hopefully, by entering to win. Uh, we'll try and do one giveaway every month from now on, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. And if you would like, you can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button. Uh, it really does help. We do greatly appreciate it. It keeps me wanting to do more of these videos and also fixing my hair each and every time just for you guys. So if you could do that, I would I would love you. I'd, I'd, I'd greatly, greatly love you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our live streams are every Sunday at 6 to 3 p.m. PST. So Pacific Standard Time or PT. I don't know how the words work, but I'm in California. So whatever the timing there works, as well as on Wednesdays, we do a whatnot stream where we sell games just like this one here. So if you're interested in picking up games, join us on Whatnot and Unfiltered Gamer. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to my wolves dominating your wolves next time. <laughs>